12 months, 14 countries, 18 cities, and over 100 kids. This is one Shakespeare director's journey around the world to unearth the most innovative ways of introducing young people to the bard. I'm Andi Kinsey, founder and director of Improv and Shakespeare. If you like the sound of our projects, please subscribe for more. The first Shakespeare I studied, I hated it, but then we studied Henry IV Part I and Hamlet, and my mind was blown. I would read these passages from Hamlet, and, and they seemed to be about me. The thing that hasn't changed in over 400 years is human beings. We are still scared and vulnerable and frightened and loving and generous and magnanimous and venal and ambitious and you know full of the complexities of wonder and the banality and insecurity of existence. Our politics is exactly the same. Shakespeare describes everything that is happening today in Australia, in America, in Europe, in China. He talks about all of these things because human interactions are the same because humans haven't changed. We've got iPhones and cars and aeroplanes and, you know, we can wear fancy clothes and stick gel in our hair. But, but what we want and what we need and what we do to each other and what we do for each other, that hasn't changed at all. The more you understand Shakespeare, the more you understand about your own future. You know, you'll be looking at uh, fights with parents, um, making up with loved ones, uh, what it means to get old, to be ambitious, to fail, to succeed. All of these are experiences that you are going to have in your life and you will go through these things and if you understand, if you know Shakespeare's work, you will, you'll have an insight into who you're, you're, you are in that moment and, and, and what you can do, the choices you can have, the possible consequences and, and you'll feel not alone. You know, you'll feel connected that, that 400 plus years ago there was a guy who wrote down stuff in beautiful, beautiful words that say people felt exactly what you are feeling now and they survived. So it doesn't matter how bad your life is, how sad it is, it helps you understand that other people have been here before and they have endured, they have overcome, they have thrived after going through the same experiences you're going through. So Shakespeare can save your life. I think one of the keys to introducing people to Shakespeare is introducing it to them in uh, bite-sized chunks, if you will. An exercise that I use a lot is just the Shakespearean insult generator. Are you familiar with that? It's classic, everyone loves it. And, and you just give people three or four words and you can introduce concepts like thou being uh, an informal way of addressing someone and you being a formal way of addressing someone. You can say thou art a beslubbering, beef-witted, Barnacle, and you can then explore the expressive language of the text and, and, and play with the vowel sounds, slabbering, and then you can you know use those kind of consonants for the punch and the power and the stabbing and the tearing of the aggressive attack of the language, giving it that meaning and bite. So it's thou art beslubbering, beef witted barnacle. You know, and you play and you play stupid games with it and then you make it interactive and you start making it a theatrical event. So you're introducing people to the idea that the words are not words, they are acts, they are action, they are attempts to insult, to destroy, to diminish, to belittle other people. And that becomes fun. Who doesn't like insulting people? And so you explore the expressive quality of the words and the expressive quality of your body when bringing those words to life. Suiting the word to the action, that's, that's what brings it to life. And we'd have a section where I'm saying, deliver the insult moving towards someone, then deliver the insult moving away from someone, and deliver the insult circling around them. And those three Basic movements are a starting point for any text. Does this line make me want to drive towards the person? Does this line make me want to move away from the person, whether I'm saying it or they're saying it? Does this line make me want to circle around the person? And if you can get them, you know, if you, and then you give them a piece of text, preferably half a dozen lines in total, no more, and you say, okay, which one is moving towards? Which one is moving away? Which one is circling around? It might not be, it, you might not have a circling round in there. They might all be moving away, or it might be moving towards, and then, you know, and then the person moves away, and then you move towards them again. But just if you give them simple, um, concrete structures to explore, and you have fun with it, and then you know maybe you introduce them to a couple of lines in the context of a story, 
and you, know, you give them the good lines, not the boring ones. And everyone goes, wow, that was exciting. And then you build on it and build on it. And then you give them a small scene and then a larger scene. And it's small steps, small steps. And then by the end, you're running a hundred yard race in the Olympics and going, yes, I am the king. And having a sword fight and singing a song and dancing a jig and slaughtering your enemies and climbing up balconies to kiss the most beautiful person in the world. That's not a bad way to live your life. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Keep the conversation going by leaving a comment below. And while you're here, don't forget to check out the next video.